Hello everybody, welcome to problem 10.1c. So this one sure looks familiar, looks similar to other problems that we've done. It's another two population test on means, but I've thrown in a little complication into this problem, just of course because we want to make things a little more difficult as we progress. So let's get to it. This one's kind of silly. I just made this one up to kind of try to illustrate a point. Suppose your cousin who recently discovered you're taking a statistics course thought they'd be a nuisance just for the fun of it. And they claim without any hesitation that the average weight of an onion is at least 50 grams more than the average weight of an ambrosia apple. Happens to be my favorite apple. And of course, they ask you to prove them wrong. As the mature student that you are, you decide to turn this into a teachable moment. You both go to the grocery store, take a random sample of onions, random sample of uh, apples, ambrosia apples, and here's our data. So how do we know that this is a two population test? Well, I've got two samples. I've got information about two samples. It must be a two population test. And certainly because the claim is that, you know, we're comparing these two apples. So there's some clues here that I'm working with two populations. How do I know that it's going to be a Z test that sigma is known? Well, not because it's given right there in the title of the problem, but when I look at the information, when I look at the data that's been given, it actually says right here that I have the population standard deviation. Now, okay, realistically, if we were doing this problem and we went to the store and grabbed some apples and some onions, we'd probably be working with the sample standard deviation but when I wrote this problem, I wanted our focus to be on something else, not dealing with t-distributions and degrees of freedom and things. So just keep this as simple as we can, and we'll do a little Z test here. So what's going to be different about this one? Well, let's look at what our claim. Again, this is telling us it's a one-tail test, but how do we know that when we read the problem? So the claim is that the average weight of an onion is at least 50 grams more than the average weight of an apple. So I, I see I see clues about it being a one-tail test. I see at least, and I see more than. So these are clues that I'm looking at a one-tail test. It's not just that it's equal to or different from, or you know, we're looking for a, a, a direction of difference, right? Specifically here, uh, at least or more. Now, what is the complication? The complication is what is right here in the middle, 50 grams more than. So we're not just doing a test to see if one weighs more than the other or one is less than the other. Now we have a specific magnitude of a difference that we're looking for. And so that doesn't change things too much but it makes formulating the test a little bit more tricky. And so that's what we'll focus on here. So let's just do quickly a little review because when we looked at two population tests before in earlier problems, remember we talked about how it doesn't really make a difference um, whether you do a lower tail test or an upper tail test. It all depends on how you define your populations. So if I have, you know, population one, I say is population A, and if population uh, B is population two, well, let's say that I want to do this test in order to determine whether or not the average of population A is greater than that of population B. Well, I would set it up like this right? So that my alternative hypothesis is showing that the mean of population A is greater than that of B. And of course, this is can easily be rewritten to look like this, right? Now, how could I do essentially the same test as a lower tail test? Well, in order to do this same problem as a lower tail test, I really have to switch those definitions around. 
because now in order to test if the mean of population A is greater than that of B, well, isn't that the same as testing whether the mean of B is less than the mean of A? So essentially the same thing, right? But one's an upper tail, one's a lower tail test, and the definitions have switched. Now, notice in both of these cases, that hypothesized value is zero. We're not testing here for a specific magnitude of the difference. We're just testing to see if one is greater than or less than the other. Now, coming back to our problem. And now I have a specific magnitude of a difference that we're testing for. This places a, a little bit of a restriction on how we formulate our tests, specifically how we define our terms. Because we want that hypothesized value to be a positive number. Some software won't even allow you to put in a negative number. You're testing for a magnitude of a difference. You want that magnitude of a difference to be positive. So that's going to influence how we set up our test. Now, when you're struggling, when, not if, when you find yourself struggling with a problem like this, it can be helpful to, to remove that magnitude at first and formulate the problem as if you are testing for a, a hypothesized difference of zero. So if I eliminate the 50, I would be formulating my test to see that the average weight of an onion is at least that of an apple, right? At least means equal to or greater than. So that the average weight of an onion, and again, we can write this in a couple of different ways, right? The average weight of an onion is at least that of an apple. So I would write it something like this. Right, so that when I rewrite it, I can read it perhaps more clearly. The average weight of an onion is at least that of an apple, so greater than or equal to. Now, I'm gonna put in that hypothesized difference. So I see I'm testing for a hypothesized difference of at least 50 grams. Well, that means that the weight of my onion must be at least, so as a minimum, equal to the weight of the apple plus 50 grams. So that difference, the onion, is either equal to the weight of the apple plus 50, or that difference is even more than. So sometimes I find this helpful for when I'm writing the problem, for when I'm putting it together. But when you're writing your test, in this case, generally speaking, the test would be written like this, not so much like this. This, again, I find it's helpful for formulating the test, um, but when you're writing it in a paper, in a report, in an assignment, this is typically the more accepted way, but different instructors might have different feelings about that. So that's telling me in my null hypotheses that the difference is at least 50, uh, 50 grams. And because I have onion minus apple, and the difference here is positive, then it means that the onion is at least 50 grams more than the apple. Okay, so that's really the only trick to this problem. So we've got our test set up to challenge our cousin's claim. The rest of this now is just as you would expect it to be. We're doing a Z test because I have the population standard deviation. So our formula here, x1, x2, minus that hypothesized difference over that standard error, this is not a two obviously, this is a one. So our sample means, here we go, I have 300 minus 256 minus 50 divided by 
Here I have my population standard deviation, so I have to make sure I square them because it's the standard deviation. Again, if we were given the variance, don't square the variance. Divided by my sample size is 28. And here's 7 squared over that sample size, 25. So this gives me my test statistic of, let's see what we get, 300 minus 256 minus 50. 9.5 squared over 28 plus 7 squared over 25. And this gives me a test statistic of negative, oops, negative 2.64. So, what's next? Bah, same old, same old. We have our test statistic. And now we're going to go down to our Z tables and we're going to find the p-value. And we can find a critical value as well. Although at this point, I think we already know what that critical value is because we've looked it up a few times. That Z for 0.05. Here we're doing, of course, this is a lower tail test. So my lower tail critical value, negative 1.645. If we go down to our Z tables, and I'm looking for negative 2.64, there's my lower tail probability, 0 0.0041. And this is a lower tail test, so that is my p-value, 0.0041. Certainly, that p-value is less than my level of significance, and my, my test statistic is less than my lower tail critical value everything comes together. We have sufficient evidence here to reject that null hypothesis. We have evidence to show that our cousin's claim is wrong, that the average weight of a white onion is not 50 grams, at least 50 grams more than the average weight of an ambrosia apple. Okay, so that's it. That's all there is to it. So I trust you see that the majority of this test, it's the same as, as any other test. What was a little bit different here and can sometimes be a little bit challenging is that formulation of the test when we've got a hypothesized value that is different from zero. Okay, thanks everybody for watching. I hope that was helpful.